You are now listening to the Be Your Own Hashtag Love Goals podcast with Mo Ari and Tiffany. We just want you to remember that every person, regardless of identity, wants these three things, belonging, authenticity, and love. And after a decade of partnership, we've learned to co-create these things and so much more. So from wherever you're listening, we're going to go on a journey of becoming our own hashtag love goals. Now let's get into this episode. Hey, it's Mo Ari and Tiffany. And you are now listening to the Be Your Own Hashtag Love Goes Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Well, I have been sitting here thinking a lot mm-hmm. about some of those first moments where you were coming to visit me in Chicago. Mm-hmm. I think it's brought back so many memories for me. Mm-hmm. I, the things that I remember vividly and you talking about later. I remember you talking a lot about how nervous I would be coming from the airport to get you mm-hmm. how it would be like I would be <laughs> just kind of like smiling but yeah. like so to myself like yes. barely even want to look in your direction yes. and I remember that too I remember waiting in the cell phone line your flight your flight will always be delayed always always uh, always always and then when I finally be able to get you from the terminal I would feel like, oh my God, this is happening. Like she's here. (laughs) She's in Chicago. I would have prepared like a goodie bag for you when you got to my apartment. The whole night. Figured out what you're going to eat. Like, so I had a playlist playing in the car Mm -hmm. because I wanted the music to be right. I just, my cheeks feel sore now, even thinking (laughs) about like how hard I was smiling and like how good that felt for you to be Mm -hmm. there. I was afraid to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like I ever said, wow, I can't believe you're here. This feels so good. Yeah, I was feeling all those feelings and I barely let them come to the surface. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you'd be like, how are you feeling? Right. Because I would be just driving like, and she's like right there. And I'm like, (laughs) wow. (laughs) Like just so excited. So this makes me think a lot about vulnerability. Mm. I don't think that I was that vulnerable. Mm. I think that... I was probably in my head being like, what do I say? What do I even, you know, say Mm -hmm. to her that she's going to be able to receive? Mm -hmm. That's not going to come across too strong. I don't want to scare her away. And I know that this is a common experience for a lot of people, especially when you like really like someone Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you want to be accepted by them. You want to create this, you know, sense of belonging with Mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So vulnerability has come up for me in thinking about, those times yeah what what about you i i mean it's certainly vulnerability and i remember those moments vividly and i also had my own version of experiencing that sort of vulnerability as well yeah um i think i'm it might have been expressed a little bit different um yeah, I think it might have been expressed a little bit differently. And I think what it, what I'm sitting with now is like, what does it even mean to be vulnerable? Yeah. Like, what does it mean? Like, what does it look like? Because on the surface, in those moments where you were picking me up and experiencing that, I knew that all of your feelings weren't at the forefront, yeah. but I didn't pinpoint it as a lack of vulnerability. Yeah. Because every time I got in the car, I heard Jill Scott. I heard some All Live by Jill Scott. I feel like that was the thing that was on constant repeat. And if you know, you know. Yeah. It's a good song. Um, I but- can't even sleep <laughs> at night. All I dream of about is making love. Such a good song. Such a good song. But yeah, so I say all that to say that it makes me really think about what vulnerability means. Like, what is the definition of it? When you think about, you know, being in a relationship, how you express yourself, like what what does it mean to be vulnerable, Mm. you know? Well, I've got some help (laughs) from our dear friend. No, I don't really know her for real, but uh, in my head. Yeah. You know, we're creating the same intentional love community mm-hmm. here on Earth. Mm-hmm. But Brene Brown has some yes. really great insights on vulnerability. So mm-hmm. I want to share them with you all. Mm-hmm. Um, so the standard definition of vulnerability in our culture, okay. before we even get to Brene Brown, 
Let's have the text is this definition. Mr. Webster? This is Mr. Webster now. <laughs> okay, Mr. Webster. Don't wait it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Webster says, and we don't actually know that Webster is a dude either. Yeah, we don't. Mr. Oxford probably. Maybe. Because it is Miriam. Miriam Webster? That's probably a unisex name. A non-binary name. Let's they stop gender said... info. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mixed webster mixed webster <laughs> the definition of vulnerability in our culture is the quality or state of being exposed to the possibility of being attacked or mm. harmed either physically or emotionally mm. so that's again the quality or state of being exposed to the possibility of being attacked or harmed either physically or emotionally now that's the textbook mm. definition how intense so if we're moving around in our culture with this standard definition for vulnerability, it makes it makes all the sense in the yep. world why when vulnerability comes up, yep. we go, I am about to be attacked. Right. I don't want to seem weak. Exactly. I, this is literally why people respond that way to the thought of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to give you what Brene says. Yeah. Vulnerability is the feeling we get during times of uncertainty risk or emotional exposure mm. so it's a feeling we get during times of uncertainty risk or emotional exposure mm -hmm. this includes times when we're showing our feelings and and we're not sure what people will think and times when we really care about something and and people will know that we're sad or disappointed when it doesn't that work is, out that is Whew. those are very different definitions very different definitions on that while you were reading the first one i feel like both of my fists were in the air like defense yeah that first definition of vul vulnerability which is widespread amongst people i think makes sense for why we have such a defensive culture it's mm -hmm. like i gotta protect myself fist up yeah and then we take that into relationship and so this reframe to brene brown's um definition of kind of bearing it all or yeah. being willing to put yourself out there quote unquote yeah absolutely yeah i mean that's powerful i'm thinking a lot about you and this idea <laughs> of a feeling that occurs when in times when we really care about something mm -hmm. and people will know that we're sad or disappointed yes. when it doesn't work out because yes. you talk to me often about not wanting to get your your hopes yes. up and so this brings me to this idea that Brene also offers in the the context of vulnerability she talks about courage mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. because a lot of people work from this understanding or this thought that vulnerability is something you kind of ease or relax into yeah. when you think of vulnerability a lot of times think you know your guards are down whatever mm -hmm. and it's the contrary sometimes you're going to feel afraid yes. even when you are feeling when you are vulnerable and you have to be brave yep. so courage is this concept that comes into this really nice alignment with vulnerability it actually takes a lot of courage mm -hmm. to be vulnerable it really does it also takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable in your relationship to be in a relationship so I love that Brene offers us courage. And the definition here for, from Brene is that courage is a heart word. The root mm. of the word courage is core, the Latin word for heart. Courage originally meant to speak one's mind by telling all of one's heart. Mm. Today, that looks like talking about how we feel, asking for what we need, being ourselves, and allowing other people to be themselves. Mm. Mm. And I think that that's extremely powerful yeah. to think about how courage is connected to vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really think so. And as you're even talking about vulnerability and having the courage, I jokingly, you know, use an example of my process of vulnerability or getting through these difficult, well, these moments that feel difficult. I describe it as climbing up a mountain in flip flops. That is not an easy chore. It, I won't say chore. It is not an easy task. It's not. To climb a rigorous mountain with rocks and, you know, it's not leveled in flip-flops. Yeah. That's challenging. So it really does take this level of courage yeah. and this, you know, this active moment to choose to get through this and yeah. like allow yourself to be seen mm -hmm. and sometimes that means asking for help or whatever the case might be in the context of a relationship yeah, so i think that courage part is really helpful in 
daring to be vulnerable yeah, you know absolutely mm-hmm. uh she also adds that being kind to others uh, is important here in courage and learning how to be brave and afraid at the same time so kind of talks about that a lot so learning to climb up that mountain and flip-flops even if you're scared yeah. It's scared. <laughs> Even if you're scared. Yeah, doing it scared. Doing it scared. Yeah. Learning how to be brave mm-hmm. and afraid at the same time. Mm. Uh, so here are some common ways that people expressed feeling vulnerable. Okay. These are some of the ways that you can begin to orient toward vulnerability as we move you know, further in this episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I want you to be thinking about whether or not you've kind of said these things or had these experiences. I feel uncertain and unsure about something I want to do, say, or try because I don't know if it's going to work out. And I might feel sad or disappointed if it doesn't. Mm. I want to do something I think is brave, but other people might think it's dumb. Mm. I want to try something new that makes me feel uncomfortable or awkward. Mm. Those are some ways that we can yeah. start to orient around, mm, have I ever felt vulnerable? For mm-hmm. anybody that's wondering, what does vulnerability feel like? Mm-hmm. Are you having any of those thoughts or questions internally? Yeah. And if, if so, you probably felt vulnerable. Yeah. Have you ever stopped yourself from saying something or doing something out of fear that it won't be received from another person? Mm-hmm. You've likely felt vulnerable. Right. So here's how you can tell if you're not being vulnerable. Mm. If you're thinking like this, you're probably not. Yeah. You're, if you're thinking vulnerability is weakness. So the thought is I'm weak for feeling like mm. feeling this scared about my audition. Mm. These are straight from Brene. Okay. <laughs> straight from Brene. Okay. If you said, I don't do vulnerability. The thought is, nope, I don't let myself feel vulnerable. I either get the part or I don't. And that's that. Mm. I can go at it alone. The thought is. I can go through this by myself without anyone's help. No one needs to know how important this is to me. So you got that job. You're like, I don't want to get my hopes up. I'm not going to tell anybody about it. That's you trying to go at it alone because you don't want to feel vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I can be vulnerable without feeling uncomfortable thinking if I do X, Y, and Z, then it's guaranteed that my uncertainty and discomfort will disappear. It's not. It's not going anywhere. Mm, I'm talking right to Tiff because we had this conversation. (laughs) Yes, it's not. (laughs) Trust comes before vulnerability. Mm. That is not true. But the thought is that I don't trust anyone and therefore I can't be vulnerable and share how I really feel about this. Mm. So I want you to sit with those things. Those are not ways of being vulnerable. Yeah. None of those are ways. And these are common ways that people talk about invulnerability or mm-hmm. show that they're not vulnerable. Mm-hmm. So as we progress through this episode, we're going to get at how we can be more vulnerable. Mm. I, I feel like um, we talking to, to me. Yeah, we me. talking to me. <laughs> Ooh, thanks to Bre- thanks to Brene for Thank setting up. Thank you, the- Brene. <laughs> for giving us these helpful tools and language. Yeah. Uh, so Tiff, we've got some questions that need answers. Mm. So we, that'll move us on to questions that need answers. Yeah. Okay, so this is the question. I've been dating a new person and something they said was really passionate, deep, and sincere. I immediately began getting teary-eyed. At the moment, I wanted to force the tears back down because I felt like it was too too soon to cry in front Mm -hmm. of them. Now I wonder if it was okay to cry. How soon can you cry in front of someone that you're dating? Mm. that's a good one that is a really good question (laughs) Uh, how soon can you cry in front of someone that you're dating the the therapist part of me wants to just validate that tears are okay they're like always okay yeah and i love this question because it was in response to something genuine and sincere how Mm -hmm. else might you respond to something genuine and sincere Mm -hmm. i think in this instance it's almost like we're not making we're making assumptions but we're not making the assumptions i'd like us to make Mm -hmm. which is that if somebody says something genuine and sincere sincere they expect a sincere and genuine response, mm-hmm. which might be in this instance, tears. Mm-hmm. I think one way to honor the authenticity of other people, like we were saying, it takes courage to yeah. do that. 
but to be kind in the face of other people's authenticity or to honor their authenticity yeah. is to show up with our own authenticity. Yeah. So I don't think that there's ever, it's ever too early to cry. However, what we do in response to the tears matters. Mm. So a lot of times if we go about trying to stuff down the tears mm. or we go about trying to then tell, open up our whole trauma history yeah. with a person because now we're opened up, mm -hmm. then our response to the tears is not really right. appropriate for the stage we're right. in. Right. But tears, I feel like, are a natural human experience that mm -hmm. we can experience with mm -hmm. a stranger. Mm -hmm. How many times have you mm -hmm. sat in a movie theater and felt tears welling yeah. up and you don't know any of these people around exactly. you don't know the characters in the movie right it's not too early in your relationship to cry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what what do you think as the resident water sign the resident water sign um i don't think i agree i don't think that there's a time that is too early i feel like we live in a culture that has uh made us feel as if feeling crying doing these particular things is too much quote unquote mm -hmm. it's too intense it makes another person feel a kind of another way or they in response feel a particular way yeah and so i feel like if we could put that piece aside we would probably operate differently in a lot of ways and mm -hmm. i'm saying that for myself mm -hmm. if the piece about how we felt other people would receive us or not receive us or accept us or versus reject us, I feel like we would lean more in. And so I would say it's, it's never too early. Like if you yeah. genuinely feel like this was so beautiful and sincere and I want to cry tears of joy, mm. we're doing our dis ourselves a disservice by trying to find a new way mm. to feel. Yeah. And I'm saying this from experience, mm. in active experience. Yeah. Like we have to really... um or I encourage people, including myself, to really connect with what the feeling is at the mm. moment. So if if your partner is telling you something beautiful and sincere and like just so heartfelt and it it just touches your heart and you want to cry, mm. let that out. Yeah, absolutely. Let that out because I feel like in the moments that we stuff that down or we're like, oh, that's too much. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we risk um, losing some of our authenticity in the moment. Yes. We risk, you know, in return, not fully expressing or receiving yeah. the, the words that your partner yeah. um, shares with you. So I would say it's, it's not necessarily too early. Like, I, I would say that there's maybe no such thing as too early. I think like you were saying our response to yeah. it really does matter though. Yeah. I think what you're getting at is that these are valuable skills yeah. that you can use throughout the relationship. Mm -hmm. Tears are valid mm -hmm. and they're important mm -hmm. and, you know, they really should be honored. Right. So I appreciate, you know, everything you said about mm -hmm. that. And you, I'm like, can you say that again for that person <laughs> all the way right there on that, in that state, yes. in that corner of the earth, because, you know, what Tiffany is saying is accurate that that tears are just this natural part of the human experience mm -hmm. and they, they should be really held in mm -hmm. any relationship mm -hmm. by yourself first mm -hmm. having self-compassion mm -hmm. allowing yourself to cry and then you know uh, allowing your partner to hold that space for you exactly um this is going to move me to hashtag love resources. Yeah. So this is a part of our episode where we just want to offer tangible tools that can get you practicing the things that we talked about in the episode mm -hmm. or, the, or the topic or strengthening your relationship uh, around the topic of the episode. Mm -hmm. So since today is on vulnerability, I've come up, we've come up with this resource yeah. together based on some therapy tools that I already have as a couples therapist. Mm -hmm. uh, we're calling this one touch and agree. Yes. Uh, Tiffany came up with this name. <laughs> <laughs> I, I promise it. it's not as churchy as it sounds. Okay. Um, but the exercise is to really sit with one another uh, and maybe sit like how we're sitting mm -hmm. uh, and we are calling it touch and agree because the, the activity is to hold hands, mm -hmm. to look into one of each one another's eyes mm -hmm. and to tell one another how you feel about the person, mm -hmm. how, why you like them or why you love them, depending on the stage of your mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we 
um, love this exercise is because it promotes a number of things. One, it activates the process of leaning in. Yeah. And we call leaning in in therapy the process of really uh, deeply engaging with your, your work mm-hmm. uh, or just really being present, giving mm-hmm. your eyes attention, you're giving attention to a person using your eyes mm. or uh, giving them attention via your other senses like touch or mm-hmm. just the co-regulation of breaths mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. Um, so we love uh, this exercise. Mm-hmm. And so here are some ground rules. Now let Tiffany talk about like how we've used this mm-hmm. exercise with couples. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you're receiving the the affirmation, the words, I invite you to set the intention to be open and don't evaluate what your partner is saying, Mm -hmm. whether or not it's what you've wanted them to say, what they should have said 10 arguments ago, anything like that. Don't Mm -hmm. evaluate it or judge it. Mm -hmm. Just observe. What do you hear them say is going to ultimately be the question at the end of it. So Mm -hmm. you want to be aware of what words they said, be able to paraphrase what they said and really, you know, set the foundation for active listening, Mm -hmm. active listening and therapy is where you're being very present to what is being said so that you can relay it back to the person in a very, uh, well-constructed way. Mm -hmm. So you want to set that foundation by really listening to what the person is saying, take in the feedback, Notice if any parts of you wants to look away or break eye contact. This is a big one for couples Mm -hmm. because that's going to get a vulnerability. Am I able to really sit and be present with them? If it makes you uncomfortable, then you're getting some information Mm -hmm. about where you are with vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And that's important Mm -hmm. because you might want to keep practicing this exercise. So this could be something to talk about after the exercise, how easy it was for either of you to stay present, keep eye contact, keep touching. Okay. Then challenge yourself to stay present, um, maintaining that eye contact and doing the courageous work of sitting in the discomfort. So don't say, oh, I'm having a hard time and stop. Really push yourself to keep going, uh, saying the things, even if it brings tears, even if it uh, makes you have to shift around in your seat, really stay with it and complete the Mm -hmm. exercise and Mm -hmm. then talk about it Mm -hmm. after. Mm -hmm. So Tiffany uh, and I went to a couple's retreat Mm -hmm. uh, about a a couple years yeah. ago at this point, and we actually got to lead other couples in this experience. So mm-hmm. I'll let you share about it. Yeah. And, you know, we use these ground rules um, that you just explained. What I love most about this experience is the level of intention. Yeah. And so we gave everyone the opportunity to kind of quote unquote prepare on what they were going to say. So whether that's jotting notes down, gathering their thoughts or whatever the case might be. And the ability to witness people, you know, put pen to paper or think about all of these intentional and positive affirmations essentially about their partner and about their relationship and sharing them with eye contact, Mm -hmm. holding hands, with a level of sincerity that was palpable almost. Um, Even to the point where it was people that I knew outside of this retreat that I was like, wow, like I got a a different glimpse into your love and it was just so beautiful to watch. And then I think even pushing it a step forward, there were a couple of the couples that even engaged in repeating back Mm -hmm. what their partner has said you know, in a summary of like, I heard you say X or I heard you say this. Mm -hmm. Um, And then that last part of receiving what they're saying was so beautiful and so sincere. And I think, you know, it's a common practice. I think it's something that we could do even more regularly in our own marriage. Um, But it is a real opportunity that I saw that these couples had to, I mean, I would venture to say reconnect in a lot of ways to hear these sort of affirmations from your partner in a very sincere and intentional container of space. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's underrated how, how impactful that is. How impactful, how powerful Mm -hmm. and definitely the feedback from other people, you know, was just that they really needed that. So I'm really grateful that we did that, Mm -hmm. that we leaned in. Mm -hmm ourselves to being vulnerable and offering this part of ourselves to that group because it was kind of like this 
multi-directional process that mm-hmm. was happening mm-hmm. while we were leading that group we were like oh are they gonna like all of our little therapy yeah. tools and exercises so we had to be vulnerable <laughs> we did that's kind of stuff that we've practiced yeah. because i'm a therapist but also because tiffany is just so open mm-hmm. it makes it easy for us to do in our relationship but sharing it with other people are they gonna think we're weird are they gonna think we're just I definitely always was like, they're gonna think this is very cheesy but the and, level of reception. I mean, they were so in it. Yeah. And so it just is such a testament to vulnerability mm-hmm. and the power of that. Mm-hmm. We didn't make it weird. So no. they were like, let's do it. <laughs> you know, uh, I love yeah. that. Thank you for sharing that too. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it's time now uh, for our game. So, uh, so we're going to be calling this segment Truth or Truth. From now on, it's going to be mm-hmm. truth or truth. And the backstory is that uh, early in our relationship, we would always play games at night. On game nights, yeah. uh, we would play truth or dare. And All it never time. was truth or dare because neither one of us wanted to do dares. We just really wanted to learn about one another mm-hmm. and have conversations. So we, it became jokingly truth or truth. But it's always a mix between truth or dare, would you rather, never have I ever. Yeah. It's just whatever questions mm-hmm. are coming to us. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, we'll name this truth or truth. And I'll let Tiffany ask you all uh, <laughs> leave these questions. I love it. So the question for today is, would you rather Mm -hmm. be in a dramatic relationship, but crazy in love Mm -hmm. or be in a peaceful relationship with the person you do not love? That's hard. (laughs) Dramatic and toxic are not the same thing. This is how these games get to being like splitting hairs. Mm -hmm. Now they said dramatic. I could take a little little flair because I'm a a Leo, so I could take a little drama. But Mm -hmm. what I won't do is uh, toxic Mm -hmm. and unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And because they didn't say that, I'm gonna take dramatic and crazy in love because I just need the love. Mm -hmm. I I I love and honor and respect the peacefulness of that this second option is offering, but mm-hmm. without that love, I, I'm really struggling to understand what that would look like. I see myself as like a mm-hmm. romantic person. Mm-hmm. That's like asking me, do I want to live? I even love my friends. So it's really hard for me to understand yeah. how we're having a peaceful existence. That's like asking me, do I want to be married to a neighbor that I don't really know? I yeah. really wonder how you could have a peaceful existence without love. Love is such a human innate feeling mm-hmm. that I feel like I can extend that to even a person on the street. Mm-hmm. So I'm really struggling to know how it's peaceful, but I don't love them. Mm-hmm. I feel, but for that's probably mm-hmm. for me, I'm being too deep because I would love. No, I, I feel like I'm with you because. I love my peace, okay? Yeah. I love peace, but what I love more than peace is love. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like love, this might be, this might be a little deep. Love is so transformative. Yeah. So I feel like if you have love, you can just about create anything else from that. Peace too. Including peace. Yeah. As long so as it's not unhealthy. So I will take toxic. dramatic and crazy in love for 500 Alex. Yeah. Because <laughs> the drama could just be passion yeah. and yeah i'll take the drama because okay. i just feel like love for me is something that is so much more than like the date you go on on friday nights or the lovey-dovey conversations that you're having <laughs> which are beautiful and i love them and i engage in them but i think love goes so much more beyond that Mm -hmm. and because it is something that to me and my life feels foundational to Mm -hmm. all of these other positive things like Mm -hmm. joy and peace and Mm -hmm. laughter and humor Mm -hmm. i'm gonna take that because also we don't know if they say a peaceful is boring right true and i just i'd rather have some a little drama a little drama i i'll take the drama any day of the week okay yeah (laughs) i'm looking at my drama right here (laughs) let's say exhilarating that's the word i like to use passionate (laughs) 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 wow yeah 
thank you, Tiffany. This has been a really great episode. Yeah. I'm glad we got to dive a little bit deeper into vulnerability mm-hmm. and share some of the tools that we've learned. Yeah. I really think you all should look at a lot of the work that Brene Brown has done around mm-hmm. vulnerability. I think vulnerability has been kind of Brene's specialty. Yeah. Um, and especially vulnerability uh and courage and yeah. love mm-hmm. and how they're all intertwined. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, you were saying earlier that Brene Brown's TED Talk yeah. on vulnerability was like the first the TED first Talk TED you've talk ever I've watched. Ever watched. I yeah. honestly, in college, when I first started going to therapy, I had no idea what vulnerability was. Yeah. And my therapist was like, go read the, go listen to this talk. And I was like, I got it. Got it. And, you know, ever since then, I followed Brene. Yeah. I've read her books. I believe Daring Greatly is the one that I really enjoyed, which is yeah. a really powerful book on courage. Yeah. Um, in the face of vulnerability. I love it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. This has been Be Your Own Love Ghost Podcast with Mo Ari and Tiffany. Y'all have a great day and be well. Bye. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Video episodes are on YouTube and Spotify. If you want your question included in an upcoming episode, feel free to reach out to us on Instagram at Be Your Own Love Goals or check out our website at lovegoespodcast.com. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Bye.